Hi, I'm Chris Maragakis of Simply Be Retreats and Therapies. I'm a life coach, therapist and podcaster. Welcome to Mindful Mutterings. Please like, share and subscribe. And as always, thanks for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, This week I want to talk to you about managing pain in all its different guises. Um, We can experience pain in many ways. It can be physical or anguish, grief, jealousy, anger, a loss of uh, feeling ourself or maybe our spiritual discomfort. It can be through world events or even feeling trapped in a body or life that doesn't honour our true self. Now, I don't know if we've always been this way or whether we've learned to be like this, but for most of us, Our natural reaction to anything we don't like is to turn away from it or try and mask it in some way. Um, And for some of us, this coping strategy becomes a slippery slope into alcohol and substance misuse or excessive spending or gambling. But for most of us, it just causes us suffering and more misery. Now, Carl Jung, excellent uh, psychologist, taught us that what you resist persists. And what he actually meant by that is that by trying to ignore or block out that which is making us uncomfortable, we're actually inviting more of it into our lives. So how does that work? Well, you're using so much energy to try and ignore what your subconscious or your inner child knows need to be addressed. And while you're doing that, while you're trying to ignore the pain, then through the very act of hiding it, you're focusing on it. And so it's growing. And as we are coming to realise through psychology and physics and energy attraction, uh, what you focus on you attract more of. Um, And so because every thought and deed has an energetic vibration, um, which are unlike magnets in that these vibrations attract similar vibrations back to themselves. This is why things like the war on drugs or anti-war rallies are unlikely to be successful. And even why unpopular people seem to be successful and disliked leaders are often re-elected it's because we're focusing on our dislike of a personal situation and so we're actually giving all our energy to it which in turn causes it to grow in population or occurrence. Uh, Mother Teresa knew this and she uh, famously refused to go to anti-war rallies but she always said she would go to a peace rally. This was not because she didn't want to end war but because she understood how energy works and she knew that lots of people coming together to focus on stopping something however noble the intention, can only result in more negativity. But if you bring lots of people together to focus on creating something positive, then by the same token, it can only be beneficial. So how does this knowledge help us to manage our pain? Well, it teaches us how we need to flip our thoughts to be successful. So instead of turning away from the pain, acknowledge it, you know, Sometimes you need to put, you know, your big girl knickers on and and just take a deep breath because it is uncomfortable. But really look at where the pain is and what it's causing you to feel. Acknowledge it, you know, honour it. And whether it's um, over global warming or a broken heart or, you know, a torn ligament, really open yourself up to the experience. Honour your pain by gently probing it to see why you are in pain. And then ask yourself if there's anything that you can do to manage or reduce it. So let me give you an example for each of the pain points I mentioned. So for a torn ligament, obviously it hurts, you know, so accept that. This is your body's natural warning system so that you stop what you're doing. So then honour that by exploring the pain. Where precisely does it hurt? What does the pain feel like? Be grateful that your body has the ability to warn and heal you and then maybe use some breath work, some ice or rest so that you can minimise the physical discomfort and try sending out an intention that you gladly take this pain to prevent others in the world from suffering. You're still in pain, it doesn't alter that but what it does is it alters your mindset towards it and so the pain lessens and this is kind of the premise for mindfulness based stress reduction, it's about turning into the emotion and turning into your feelings so that you can start to challenge and address them. Um, For the broken heart, again, you need to accept the pain. You need to honour it. You need to bring it into the present so that you can examine what is actually causing you the pain. And then name the emotions, you know. Maybe you're feeling grief or abandonment or maybe it's not your confidence or now you feel unlovable. Be honest because once you are aware of these emotions, 
that in itself, although it's a painful process, is one that will reap huge benefits in your life because then you can start to empower yourself. Then you can start to examine them. Then you can start to see what you can do so that you can grow through them. And then when you're grieving, and, and this is a tough one because obviously we all experience death and we're, we're not very good at um, talking about it in the Western world. Um, and it's that loss of the person in your life. It's how they made you feel or the, other, the way that other people treated you when you were with them. And okay, yeah, it might be grief through um, a loss, a death, or it might be grief through the ending of a relationship or falling out. Either way, your feelings are real. Honour them, you know. And then it's, it's just difficult to be able to move forward if you don't honestly find out what is the root cause of your suffering because when you start to bury it that's when it starts to gain more and more power and that's when long-term problems start to present themselves um so then you ask yourself you know where why did they hurt you and be honest you know should you take responsibility for some of the history leading up to the event you know if you if it's a falling out or a end of a relationship um you know were you trying to change them or wanting them to act in a way they weren't capable or comfortable with did you not spend enough time with them and so there's a little bit of guilt there you know did you not tell them that you loved them before you lost them any of those things be honest and then there's a whole slew of coping strategies that you know are widely available that can then help you to make peace and move on from that um and also you need to question yourself when it's around other people. Did you actually lose yourself in them and give them the power over your happiness and confidence? Because, of course, one, when they're no longer there, all of a sudden you've got nothing to be boist, uh, boosting you up and making you feel buoyant. And so that also needs to be addressed. And it's something that you need to kind of try and prevent in the future going forward, because in an ideal relationship, you've got two individuals coming together to make you both stronger and more empowered, not that one loses themselves in the other. And then for the global warming example, identify what you're worried about and then look for what you can do. Don't focus on stopping the damage because, again, you're focusing on a negative and you're giving it more energy. Focus on healing the environment and don't don't argue with the people that are contributing to the problem. Educate them or vote for someone who's fo focusing on a positive solution. You know, look for ways in your life where you can contribute positively and maybe even become a role model through example for those around you. Your actions, you know, for that kind of scenario could include maybe reducing the meat products and processed food that you eat or recycling, maybe shopping sustainably, uh, meditating on healing the planet or just joining other positive groups and lending your energy to them. As I said, you know, these are these are big things that you're having to deal with and to be able to face pain is um, in itself an incredibly painful process because this level of self-discovery and honesty, you know, can bring up all kinds of things. And it may be that you need a coach to help you move through that. But if you don't go through this process and you don't manage to release the pain so that you can move forward, you're actually creating more pain in the future that needs to be addressed. And we store pain in our body and it wears us down and can eventually cause joint pain and mental and physical illness. So for us to be happy and healthy and well-rounded individuals, we need to be proactive in addressing the things that we're being signposted to by our emotions. And pain is obviously one of those emotions. Because then once we can do that and we, we pay attention to where we're being signposted, then we can identify, challenge and change our ideas and our behaviours and our actions. And that's how we grow. And if we didn't feel the pain, how would we know there was something amiss you know, and how we've finished working our way through it, because it's when the pain is no longer overwhelming or intense that we know that we've started to make real progress. So, as always, just a little snippet into how you can start to deal with things to make your life more joyful and happier and less um, triggerful so that you can choose to respond to the things that happen in your life. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you've got any questions or you would like support with identifying managing pain in any of its manifestations, then please get in touch with me via the website. As always, thank you very much for listening. Uh, website, as always, I nearly forgot, is um, simplybe.org.uk. Um, and hopefully you'll join me for the next one. Take care of you. Bye.